welcome. Today we're going to focus on yield potential, on plant populations, on, on the various aspects that, that uh, determine how much yield your rice gets. So we're beginning today in a hole, in a, in a blank space in our, in our rice crop. You can see here where there should be rice, there's no rice. I think there's two reasons for it. Firstly, when we're transplanting, I suspect this area only received less, less than the number of seedlings it should have, if any at all. Uh, we can see, uh, let's see really, but behind us a little here, we can see some seedlings that are, are very delayed. I'm not quite sure why they're delayed so much, but it's an indicator that in the transplanting process, something didn't quite go right. But what's made it worse is rats. You can see in front of us leaves that have been removed, chopped off, tillers that have been uh, removed by rats. So where we've had a space, the rice around it has attempted to compensate, has attempted to grow bigger, and it seems to have failed. And I think the reason it's failed is the rats have taken advantage of this open area and targeted this area for their own food purposes, their own food consumption and hence damage the yield potential. So the rice, and it's something we're going to, a central theme today, that the rice is what we call a very plastic plant, a very elastic plant uh, between plant number, tiller number and panicle size. It's got quite an ability to adapt and to compensate. But here's a location where it hasn't worked. The open space is still an open space and the plants around us are not particularly convincing. In this area there's definitely quite a large damage to uh, the yield of the crop uh, and it will reduce the average yield of the whole field, no doubt. It, it's the locations like this that, uh, that Akim got so upset about two weeks ago when he was top dressing. They're visually quite ugly, but importantly, in terms of yield potential, they're very, very damaging. Here we have one plant. It might have been two or three plants, in fact. Each plant has tillers, and each tiller has a panicle of a certain size, a certain number of grains sitting on the top of it. So that's what we call the yield components. So I'd like, uh, Benoit, you to consider how rice can adapt to different situations, different plant populations, different radiation, different different aspects of the plant environment, and how it compensates for that in the, to get the yield at once. Yes. Thank you, Ray, for inviting me. Uh, yeah, I will try to answer this question. Uh, as you mentioned, yes rice or wheat, this type of, um, of cereals have a very good ability to tiller, so it makes the things very different. W once you have missed your planting with maize, it's nearly faint. Uh, it's not the case with the other crop until certain limit. So yes, uh, due to the, this very large number of tillers I can produce, and during a relatively long time, until more or less the time they start to elongate. So during for rice here during two months, which is a long period, uh, they can produce a lot of what we name tillers, this, uh, these stems, and uh, until covering a much larger space than what they are, what they are covering at the beginning. So yes, they, they give them uh, a good ability to recover if we miss, if the plant density uh, at the beginning is not sufficient, if we miss more or less the a little time. at the moment. We're now beginning grain fill. So if we pick a, pick a grain and squeeze it, it's at what's called the milky stage, the, the, the photosynthate, the, the, the starch, the protein, etc. is starting to be formed inside the grain. Flowering has finished here. Flowering is still underway for the inbred behind me. It's about a week afterwards, but uh, grain fill has definitely begin and begun, and that's why you can see the odd panicle is now turned downwards. It's getting a little heavy and starting to show that it's, it is bearing grain. Otherwise, <laughs> rats aside, it's it's quite a good news story. There's there's few weeds. The, 
it's it's setting its pentacles well. There doesn't seem to be any insects uh, issues, any other pathogen issues at the moment. Uh, watch this space. Um, but it looks good for a reasonable yield potential, notwithstanding our rat problem over there. Next we'll be choosing when to drain the field. As we did last time, we agonised for some time over exactly when to drain. We got it basically right, notwithstanding we had a big lodging problem last year, so we're going to be thinking about that. How can we do anything to counteract the lodging problem? Uh, but the next, yeah, the next decision will be when to drain the field, and then harvest will be in about a month, I would say, from now.